Now your journey has reached the end of its trail, because today is a fine day to die. We shall meet again in a great hall in the sky and be till the end of time. Or at least until the end of this review. This is a chair position for Die for Valhalla, developed by Monster Couch. Done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 10 of your local West Stinky currencies, unless you're in Canada, in which case it's closer to 15. Uh, what is it? Die for Valhalla is an action RPG where you hack, slash, and crash your enemies. Uh, possess and take full control of heroes, monsters, and other things to help the Vikings save their realm. Uh, the devs sent some keys for this, so thanks a bunch. And this is the chair acquisition where we take your game and then break it down to its base levels and then say disparaging remarks about its mother. And also rate it on a scale from one to four chairs. So we, we break it up into two sections here. We got the facts, the does it launch performance, graphics, and Control, and we assign it a one to four chair score, and then we give it a more nebulous one to four chair score for fun. That's the review. So let's kick this off. Then how 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 to do on Ubuntu? Um, on the distribution that it should work on. Um, hey man, Ryzen 7 1700, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, NVMe drives, 980s, and all that shit. Right? Does it launch? Yes, it launches. Seems legit. How does it perform? We'll <laughs> look at it. Um, solid 60. Uh, wouldn't say it had chuggy, but it wasn't perfectly smooth, but it always hit 60. 100% on that. Graphics. Again, look at it. It looks like Streets of Rage and Don't Starve Together. Had a baby. Use condoms, kids. Um, <laughs> controls. You can't unpossess shit. More about that in the fun section with the steaming controller. Also, wasn't about to try to play a brawler with a keyboard. So, this is going to get uh, three functioning chairs for me and one crippled, mangled, fucked up chair. Because those controls, man, the hell. I mean, so on, on Fedora 28, 64-bit with the uh, i7-6700K, GTX 1080 Ti, NVMe drives, and all that good stuff, it definitely does launch. <laughs> Hold 60 at UHD. Uh, sometimes it'll it'll drop below. But I, um, that that had, that's kind of because there's really no option to disable VSync or anything like that. It's just kind of capped at the max frame rate it will support. Um, and for the control-wise, I was pleasantly surprised i always am because i like using the uh the dual shock this boy right here uh and it had correct button prompts which is fairly rare these days and no issues with the controller unlike the rest of you guys apparently they just tested this on a dual shock and called it a day and i'm 100 percent fine with that so it gets yeah. four chairs from me for green check marky chairs yeah not so four, this not bismarcky chairs this was a new one for me because with the Ryzen uh, 1600 and the GTX 1080 running on Solus with the 4K display right here on my left and the two 1080s on my right, that brings us to a total of uh, 50, uh, sorry, 5,760 pixels wide. Uh, and I still wasn't able to make out just what the hell was going on because the game in its infinite wisdom, decided to spawn, the first time I launched it, in a 10,000 by 10,000 pixel window. Yeah, so off to the Unity prefs file I went, set it to UHD, and, well, then it worked just fine. Uh, the performance, it it's okay. It's um, It holds 60. It's just during the loading screens that it seems to dip a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, the graphics, yeah, like Ven already mentioned, it looks a lot like Don't Starve, but with Vikings. Uh, the controls, yeah, much like Ven, the right analog stick to unpossess characters is broken if you use an X input controller. Uh, it's uh, be it like the 8 bit do TD Tiny controller or the Mistress, the Steam controller. Just couldn't do it. On the keyboard, it works fine, but it doesn't give you the ability to rebind keys on the keyboard. So it loses two chairs as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that's moral of the story. Play this game on Fedora with a DualShock. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how about the fun section, Ben? Do you, uh, do you enjoy yourself? Man, I, I almost got it right. I thought Pedro could do like five minutes to answer four simple questions. Almost. <laughs> almost. Four minutes, 32 <laughs> seconds. Almost. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is our subjective part over here on 1804. I forgot to mention that. Again, this is Streets of Rage and Don't Starve Together. They had a baby. It's Ground and Pound Brawler. They had an ability to possess shite that, frankly, I couldn't use. And that's really kind of a bad thing. But not for the reasons that you might think. You see, the thing is, I was more than happy playing it with uh, my swingy swordman character. 
for the hour of time I did put into it. So here's where it kind of fell apart, because if your neat mechanic, your unique idea, the thing that you get, this possession mechanic, if it can be ignored, it might not be that neat, Brad. It just might not. Um, I kind of quit reading the kind of middling dialogue when the word, and I shit you not, millennial showed up in the text. It's like, nope, oh, skip, yeah, yeah. That, skip, that, that, that skip. one was a thing. <laughs> uh, what do you have? You got skill upgrades after each level. I ended up just kind of picking random shit because... I'm a bitch. I played it on normal difficulty, and on normal normal difficulty, this thing shits health. So you don't really have to worry about anything else. I mean, just it's like, oh, I needed some health. I'd run over to a fucking bush, and I was like, boom, heart done. Uh, unlike Pedro, I refuse to play a fucking brawler with a keyboard. So I know I am missing out on some of that fun, some of those mechanics that would make the game kind of enjoyable or more enjoyable. But if you're anything like me, old man Vin, heed my vote organ for this game. Me. Uno cero. How do you say chair in Portuguese? I, I'm just fucking with you. I don't care. Go ahead. No, no, no one cares, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad little beat em up. Um, the body swapping thing is a little interesting insofar as in the some of the later levels, things get a little clusterfucky and you'll get your ass killed and you'll need to uh, swap between a couple uh, different dudes. And there's different strategies. Usually I just go with the sword and board guy because he seems to be the uh, fastest attacker, which um, seemed to work out for me. Um, the levels do get a little samey at times, but they they keep adding enough like new enemies and obstacles to keep it fresh. Um, but yeah, no, those those um, those uh, little in between humor segments, quote unquote, hmm. contractually mandated, are not very good. Yeah, mm. they're, the the writing's not too great. Uh, but the gameplay is really solid. And the, the RPG mechanic system reminds me of a tabletop game I'm a fan of called Fate of the Normans Ragnarok. And I'm pretty sure my buddy Andrew, who makes that, is going to probably want to sue somebody about that. Because <laughs> it's a little it's a little close there. Especially with uh, some of the presentation with uh, the runes and whatnot. Um, but it's still, it's still solid. Uh, I, I tried to spec into attack and do as much damage as possible. And that seemed to be a uh, good strategy. They have, they have um, other power-ups that a couple of them kind of seem useless involving summons. I couldn't figure out how to summon shit. So the summons are what you do when you bring the Vikings back to life. Oh, really? That's mm-hmm. what they call them. Yeah. You pound on the uh, grave and you're like, wake up, motherfucker. I didn't see that. that <laughs> I guess that was not made clear to me. But anyways, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. I, I enjoyed it. I sunk about two hours into it. And then I looked at the clock. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I can put it down now because I have enough for the review. Um, but I'm, what, would really, what would really steal the deal for this is some online multiplayer because there's there's local co-op. Mm-hmm. And I think this, what you meant would, to say is what would keep you coming back to this. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, and again, like this, this is a great little brawler. That you need like a Charlie murder mode where like you have to beat people up so you can go to the next area. <laughs> um, and that's not there. I'm going to give it three chairs, though, just because it is solid. It's pretty fun if, you, if you're if you playing it on the appropriate hardware that has been configured properly a la Topware Interactive. Yeah. Basically yeah. own a PS4 <laughs> DualShock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it looks a lot like crawl and the possession ability that uh, crawl had. Uh, you just uh, you're a spirit and you're taking uh, you're possessing and crawl. Uh, you one of you would get to be the hero and everyone else would get to play as the enemies. So here it's a little bit more straightforward than that. You just possess the heroes and you make yourself through the waves of uh, uh, AI controlled enemies. I the action is solid. It, it's um, it's a bit let down by the lack of proper uh, sound effects, but it the background music on the other hand is pretty good. So there's a bit of a dissonance there. Uh, the roguelite elements, which this game has a plenty of, are. Um, well, uh, they mostly manifest in the way that if the Viking that you've been controlling for several uh, stages now dies, well, now you just have to start with the base level one. But as you progress and you kill enemies, uh, the Valkyrie that you're controlling also powers up. And like Jordan said, uh, getting a lot of damage is a pretty good way to go about things because it made the troll fight kind of a walk in the park. Uh, the Honestly... I wish I could have played this with a controller. That's the, immediately what my hands reached for when the game started. It's like, oh, it's one of them, right? Why can't I unpossess characters? 
yeah, that needs to be fixed. And it's not a horrible game after you, you know, bring down the window from 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. It shits victory from heaven. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, three chairs for me. Oh, right. I got Jordan muted because he was yawning. Hang on. <laughs> Go for it. Take two. No, it no. My, see, that joke was brilliant. Y'all would have laughed and now you're denied it. Fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do we think? Uh, I think it's yes. uh, we on the heavy price side for something that doesn't have rebindable controls in 2018. What the fuck? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, on, that, on online multiplayer, that again, that's sort of the come on, come on, guys, add that in. Right. F figure out a way to do that. That's, that's got to be yeah. in there before I can give the same type of recommendation. So, uh, we got some hate incoming. Yeah, coming up next. We 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 enter our our fucking 18th chapter in our fucking Beowulf saga of rechargeable batteries. <laughs> <laughs>